E cell, delta G, and the equilibrium constant. We'll be taking a look at the mathematical relationship between these three in this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do DAT, OAT, and MCAT prep as well. I'll leave a link in the description for where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson's part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the rest of this school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so it turns out that your standard E cell, your standard value for delta G, and your equilibrium constant are all mathematically related. They're all mathematically interdependent, in fact. So that if you know one, you actually can calculate the other two, and you could be on the hook for just such an occasion, and we're going to do an example uh, of exactly this. So we're going to take a look at this lovely reaction, and we're first going to calculate the standard value for the cell potential, E cell. Uh, and then we're going to use that to calculate delta G and KEQ. Now, we hinted towards this in the last lesson, but the relationship between delta G and E cell so is given by this lovely equation. So, and it turns out, uh, N here's the number of moles of electrons transferred in either the half reaction or complete reaction. So, F is Faraday's constant, same one we saw, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. So, and then you got your E cell, and notice... Uh, we use delta G and E cell to figure out if a reaction is spontaneous. We've already said that if delta G is negative, reaction spontaneous. If E cell is positive, reaction spontaneous. And here's the mathematical relationship that shows you that if E cell is positive, that because of that negative sign, delta G is going to come out negative. F here is a positive constant, N is a positive number of moles of electrons. And so if E cell is positive, because of that negative sign, delta G has to come out negative. They're mathematically interdependent. Now, back in the thermodynamics chapter, we saw a relationship between delta G and the standard value for delta G. And we found out uh, that at equilibrium, delta G went to zero and Q equaled the equilibrium constant. And we got another relationship out of that, that delta G standard equaled negative RT ln of that equilibrium constant. Well, in the last lesson, we saw that from that lovely relationship between the non-standard and standard values for delta G, we derived the Nernst equation relating the non-standard and sta standard values for the cell potential, the E cell. So, and in similar fashion, at equilibrium, this E cell value under non-standard conditions goes to zero, and Q equals K. And we get another relationship in very similar fashion out of this, where E cell standard equals RT over NF natural log of the equilibrium constant. And so notice that this first one up here relates delta G standard to the equilibrium constant. You know one, you can calculate the other assuming you know what temperature it applies to. Same thing now with your standard E cell value in your equilibrium constant. You know one, you can calculate the other as well. Again, assuming you know what temperature you're uh, uh, referring to. Cool. And so if you know any one of these three, your standard value for E cell, your standard value for delta G, or your equilibrium constant, any one of those three, you should be able to calculate the other two. And as we said, again, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to calculate E cell standard for this, given some reduction potentials. And I'm just taking out the two that we need here. So but typically, you'd have a whole table of them at your disposal. So we're going to use that to calculate your standard value for E cell here. And we can see that uh, zinc is exactly backwards what we see here. Here it's getting oxidized. This is the reduction potential. So instead of negative 0.76 volts, it's positive 0.76 volts is one way to look at that. And then copper two plus to copper, exactly what we see here. So positive 0.34 volts. And so positive 0.34 and positive 0.76 means that our standard cell potential is going to equal positive 1.10 volts. Notice you could have also done cathode minus anode, 0.34 minus a negative 0.76. So whether you change the sign on the anode to make it an oxidation potential or whether you subtract to change the sign for you, both lead you to the same answer again, that your standard cell potential is 1.10 volts. Okay, so now we can find both delta G and KEQ, and we can use this one to get delta G standard from the standard value of E cell. So, and then we got a couple of different options. Once we get delta G standard, we could use this relationship to get the equilibrium constant. We've done that in the past, or we could use this one as well, and we'll do it that way since it's new. So let's get delta G first. So in this case, delta G standard equals negative N F times your E cell standard. And so in this case, that's going to be negative. And in this case, this is a two electron transfer. Whether we're looking at it 
copper two plus going to copper, that's two electrons being gained, or zinc going to zinc two plus, that's two electrons being lost. Overall, it is balanced to a two electron transfer. That's what gets plugged in right here. So two moles of electrons, Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons, and then times your standard cell potential here of 1.10 volts. All right, now instead of writing a volt here, I'm gonna write what a volt actually is equal to, and that is a joule per coulomb, so you can see how the units work out. A volt equals a joule per coulomb. But you can see how the moles of electrons part is gonna cancel here, the coulomb's gonna cancel here, and delta G is gonna come out in joules. I just wanna make sure you realize that because if you're doing this as like a part of a multiple choice calculation, odds are the delta G's are probably gonna be listed in kilojoules instead. You might have to convert at the end. So, but using volts, this comes out in joules. So we've got two times 96,500 times 1.1, and we're going to get 212,300. Uh, I must have lost the negative sign. I lost my negative sign on the front. Well, let's try that again. So negative 212,300. Notice we should have expected it to come out negative. And if we divide by 1,000 to convert to kilojoules, then negative 212.3 kilojoules. So there's your delta G standard. And like I said, if we want to calculate KEQ from here, we could use that delta G standard to get it. So but let's go the new route here and let's do one other thing. So a lot of you will have this abbreviated. Again, at 298 Kelvin, so R times T divided by F is gonna be 0.0257, and then divided by that N value times the natural log of KEQ. So there's a version of this one as well that used that same combination of constants, as long as you're at 298 Kelvin that we saw in that last lesson. And so let's go ahead and calculate that equilibrium constant. Now rearrange this a little bit. And so in this case, we're gonna have N times E cell all over 0 0.0257 equals ln of k. And then to get rid of that ln, you might recall it's e, the exponential, their inverse function. So here they cancel. So we're left with k equals n times e cell. And n here in this case was, again, 2 moles of electrons. We'll go from there. In fact, I guess I should plug in all my numbers. So we got 2 moles of electrons times 1.10 volts, all over 0 0.0257. E to the power of, my bad. Oh, I suddenly realized this was not gonna come out large enough. And notice I'm expecting it to come out very large. You notice we got a positive voltage. Reaction is definitely spontaneous under standard conditions. That's why I knew delta G standard should come out negative and fairly negative at that. And we should expect the equilibrium constant, this reaction being spontaneous under standard conditions, is going to favor the products. And in this case, it's very spontaneous, so favor them heavily, which is why we should expect the equilibrium constant to come out much, much larger than 1. All right, so 2 times 1.1 divided by 0 0.0257. And then we're going to do e to the 85.6 here. That's going to be a big number. 1.5 times 10 to the 37. So a reaction that heavily favors the products at equilibrium. Cool, and that's exactly how this works. Again, we started off with a table of reduction potentials. We used it to calculate the standard value for E cell. We then used that standard value for E cell to calculate the standard value for delta G. So, and then we use the standard value for E cell to calculate the equilibrium constant as well. And again, you can start out with any one of those three. This last one was the worst part of the calculation for solving something under a natural log, but I can give you the standard value for your cell potential, your standard value for your Gibbs free energy, or your equilibrium constant, and you should be able to calculate the other two. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like and a comment let me know are pretty much the best things you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for any extra Gen Chem help, take a look at my General Chemistry Master Course. It includes over 1,200 practice questions, video solutions, final exam rapid reviews, practice final exams. I'll leave a link in the description. Free trials available. Happy studying.